Greetings everyone, Evan here, back again. Today I'm going to be bringing you a $350 gaming PC build based around the Intel Pentium G4500, which is uh, one of Intel's newest Skylake CPU processors. Now I know a lot of people wouldn't necessarily build a gaming PC around a Pentium, uh, especially a gaming PC that you would be using for high-end gaming or that sort of thing, or a computer specifically designed with gaming in mind and you aren't just gaming on the side. But with Intel's newest improvements, I believe that the Intel Pentium G4500 is more than enough horsepower to actually play some of the newest games on the market. Uh, from Intel Skylake CPU processes, we're actually seeing the highest single core performance of any Intel processor in this price range ever, and I think that's great. Skylake was a huge improvement over uh, the Haswell Refresh CPUs. The same with the Haswell Refresh was an improvement over Haswell and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So uh, Intel has maintained a fairly consistent jump in performance uh, from their generation to generation CPUs, and I think that's important when you come out with a whole new platform, uh, has as Intel has uh, right here. Of course, with the benefits of Skylake, you're also getting uh, DDR4 memory support, and you're moving on to a new socket. You're moving on to the Intel 1151 socket, as opposed to the Intel 1150 socket. If I had more budget, I'd go with an Intel Core i3 or an Intel Core i5, as I did in my previous $550 gaming PC build based around the uh, Intel Skylake, Skylake architecture. However, um, I believe that this is a good price performance balance, and really it's one of the best you can get with this kind of budget of $350. So I'm going to jump right into it. As I said before, we're going to start off with the Intel Pentium G4500 3.5 GHz dual core processor. Dual core doesn't sound like a lot, especially with the Pentium name is known for a lot of lower end CPU processors, but we're seeing some really high performance out of the CPU processor and a lot of games don't utilize four cores. We're getting better. I don't think we're going to be able to say that maybe two or three years from now. I think all games will eventually start utilizing multiple core systems and they'll start utilizing four and eight cores. But for right now, most games do only use one or two cores. I'd say two is pretty much the majority now. And uh, with gaming in mind, the Intel Pentium is clocked high enough, uh, delivers the performance to play most modern games on medium to high settings. And that's really what more could you ask for for a $350 build. So I think that it's a very solid gaming PC um, CPU for this budget range. As we can see here, just some data down here, clocked at 3.5 GHz. It is a locked CPU, so you're going to be dealing 3.5 GHz uh, no matter what. You cannot overclock the CPU. Core 64-bit and socket LGA 1151. For motherboard, we have a Gigabyte GA H110M Micro ATX LGA 1151 motherboard. Pretty standard motherboard, nothing too frilly about it, nothing too special about it. It is micro ATX, so it's a smaller motherboard, but you have room for your expansion. You have some mini PCIe, you have your standard PCIe slots, RAM slots. You got four uh, SATA there, it looks like. Um, it also looks like you have USB 3.0 support. And uh, it doesn't have all the extra frills the more expensive motherboards has, but for this budget range, I believe it's a good middle ground. For memory, we have 8 gigs, uh, 2 times 4 gigabytes of DDR4-2133 memory. This is around 1000 megahertz faster than uh, the slowest DDR3 memory. So you're seeing a real step up in the performance of DDR4 over DDR3, which is one of the reasons that I don't like to recommend an AMD build at this point. And one of the reasons the AMD really needs to catch up in the CPU market and the supporting of these newer technologies that Intel basically updated their platform overnight. We saw... Uh, Intel move on to the DDR4 memory, we saw Intel move on to the new socket, extremely high performance over the previous generation. AMD has kind of been stuck in a rut. AM3 Plus socket is now three years old, FM2 or FM2 Plus is aging, and even though you could say that an 860K will outperform the Pentium um, at the $80 price range, it doesn't support these newer technologies. You can't get DDR4 with a um, older CPU, at least I believe you can't. And um, Really, I think that's just one of the reasons that you should stick with the Intel build if you're going to build a PC right now. If you can wait, see you until quarter 1 2016 comes around, and we'll see if AMD is able to bring those newer technologies into light, and we'll see if we can uh, have more competition. Competition is always good. I'm always rooting for AMD. They're kind of like the underdog of the tech industry, and uh, but they do make a very good product. For our hard drive, we've got a Hitachi Ultra, Store, Ultra Star. 750 gigabyte, 3.5 inch, 7200 RPM internal hard drive. 
what's really interesting right now is that is the lowest priced um 7200 rpm one terabyte drive right now is around 42 or 43 dollars so it's about 10 to 15 dollars depending on what brand you get um more expensive than uh what you see here also the 500 gigabyte drives that i could find they're all about three or four dollars more expensive than the 750 gigabyte hard drive for some reason this kind of odd middle ground hard drive at least right now is actually cheaper than both the one terabyte and the 500 gig models available. I don't know if they're trying to liquidate because people don't think to search for to buy a 750 gig drive. Or maybe they're going to no longer be manufacturing this size anymore. It's a very strange thing. But basically you get 250 gigs extra storage space for, the, for less than you would 500 gigs. It's kind of interesting, but hey, go for it is what I say. And uh, really, solid hard drive, mechanical hard drive. And enough storage space to store all your games and that sort of thing. For a video card, we've got a Gigabyte Radeon R7250 2GB video card. This is going to be a... Um, let me go ahead and visit the Newegg page here. This is going to be a 2GB 128-bit DDR3 card. The R7250 is definitely a lower range uh, video card for AMD. It's one of the lowest ranges in the Entertainment series by AMD. R7 is Entertainment, R9 is Enthusiast Grade. But it's better than the R7240, which is basically crap. You really don't want an R7240 unless you're only going to be viewing like HD video and that sort of thing. It's okay for that. But the R7250, in my opinion, is what I would call solidly good enough. You're going to be able to play most modern games on medium settings. Some of the older games uh, that are two or three years old, like uh, say Counter-Strike on high settings, and you'll be able to play just about anything on the market uh, at an adequate setting, I would say. And uh, really for $350, that's all you can really expect to get. You're not going to be running everything on Macs or anything, but this will play any game on the market. you got two gigs of graphical memory to work with. DDR3 isn't as good as DDR5, but it fits the bill. It fits the price range well. You're only paying about $74 or so total, which is uh, really a great price for a build like this. and fits well with the balance and price-performance ratio along with the CPU and the motherboard that I think we're going for uh, in this build. For case, we have a Zion, Zon, or Exxon, 310BK Micro ATX Mid-Tower case. Really, it's a great-looking little case for... Uh, whatever the price is here, around uh, $28 or so. It um, comes with its own LED, blue LED case fan. It supports uh, USB 3.0 front panel. You got another USB 2.0 front panel, standard uh, audio and microphone ports. Comes, like I said, with a case fan. And it's not that cookie cutter sheet metal kind of crap on the inside. It's a nice black internal storage and stuff. It's got that nice gunmetal style design where it uh, doesn't look like it's made entirely out of plastic. And it's... Uh, Really just a great solid little case for the price. I'm surprised it's priced so low, but it works. And uh, when you're at this price range, you can't afford to put a whole lot into your case, unfortunately. I'd say the average price for a case is anywhere from $50 to $100, so this is around half that. But it fits the bill just fine. It does okay. For our final component, we've got an EVGA 400 watt ATX power supply. Really, it's an overall decent power supply for the money. It's not 80 plus bronze or anything certified. I believe this comes in at about 75% efficiency, which is more than enough for a build like this. I believe the wattage for this is under 200 watts, so you're under half maximum draw load, which still leaves you enough room to upgrade in the future if you wanted to upgrade your CPU. Which you, With this motherboard, you can upgrade all the way up to an i7 if you wanted to, and you can upgrade your uh, GPU to whatever you feel that you would need, but really... That's kind of time in the image, but it's just a power supply. EVGA makes a solid power supply, and it'll more than power uh, what you're going to need it to be doing. And it's not like a Logisys or Raid Max power supply, which anything over 50% load, it just kind of melts and dies. So that is my overall build, guys. Uh, this is, a, as I said before, a $350 build based around the Skylake architecture. Unfortunately, uh, the i3s all start around at around $100 plus, dollars, so I wasn't able to get an i3 into this build like I was in my previous $350 standard gaming PC build that utilized the Haswell refresh. But in my opinion, with this improvement, this dual-core processor is still going to be more than enough power to play all your games. Uh, this is kind of in the um, console killer 
range of budget. You can get a console around $300, $350, $400, and this is right in that price range. So you get the value of a PC gaming uh, for the price range and for the budget, and you can upgrade to the newest and best platform that Intel has to offer with their 1151 socket. Leave a comment down below if you enjoyed the video. Send a like, subscribe, all of that helps me out and helps me making more YouTube videos here. I feel like I'm going to be making more tech videos in the future similar to this or maybe even some live action stuff I can get it sorted out because these videos do seem to do the best on my channel. I also have some gaming videos if you're interested in that sort of thing or if you're not, don't worry. I'll be making more videos of the tech style in the future as well. Thanks for watching everyone.